This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada, and you're listening to Python's Paradise, your film and music show, and this is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. The Python Hyena. And folks, we are celebrating the 35th anniversary of one of my favorite comic book movies, a film that uh, came out in 1982, which meant I would have been 10 years old that year. I'm talking about Conan the Barbarian, a film that put Arnold Schwarzenegger on the map before Terminator. And I have a guy I remember so well from the film. He played Thorgrim with that massive hammer. I have Swin Oli Thorson. Did I did I say your name right? That's me. Okay. I I did I didn't want to disrespect a guy that can lug a weapon that big. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, first off, welcome to the show. Have you ever been out this this far in Canada before? I've worked in Canada several times. I work in Vancouver. I worked in Toronto. I uh, I've been all over Canada. I love Canada. I think Canadians are the most civilized people in the world. Oh, thank you. Have you ever been out here at the Maritimes here in New Brunswick? Uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Not very many of my interviewees even know where uh, the Maritimes is, you know, but uh, we're located uh, right next door to Nova Scotia and Halifax. So. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. okay. We, we've got great big snow banks here right now. We've been hit with uh, a lot of snow, and I was just watching footage of you uh, fighting Arnold Schwarzenegger in the snow, and I'm like, you guys would be right at home at that. Uh, the weather we got now. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm born in Denmark, so I'm used to it. <laughs> What's it like in Spain right now? Because I've never been to Spain. Spain is probably the best country in Europe right now. I remember when I did Conan here in Almeria, Almeria, Almeria. Almeria in 1980. Um, I fell in love with Spain based on the idea of siesta. So during the day, between 2 and 5, they take a break. Oh, I wow. thought that was pretty smart, so I said to myself, one day, that happened a year ago, I want to live in Spain, and now I live in Spain. I live in a little city in the mountains called Burro del Alcoy, 10,000 people, and uh, beautiful, beautiful weather, mountain view, half an hour from the beach, so it's fabulous. Wow. Well, Conan the Barbarian celebrating its 35th anniversary, and I'm so happy to to help celebrate that that landmark. And uh, of course, you were so memorable in that movie. Um, tell me about the process of you being cast in that movie and and uh, working with John Milius, the director. Yeah, I uh, in Denmark, I was uh, the founder of three sports federations: the Danish Powerlifting Federation, the Danish Bodybuilding Federation and the Danish Martial Arts Federation, and I was champion in all of them myself. So uh, doing uh, the World Championship in, uh, in uh, San Francisco in 1978, I uh, hang with Arnold because uh, a couple of years earlier, I uh, took care of the premiere Pumping Iron in Denmark, and we celebrated his movie there, and we became friends, and we went skiing, and Et cetera, et cetera. So now I'm in Los Angeles, and I'm hanging with Arnold, and he had to visit John Milius because John wanted to do a picture called Conan the Barbarian. He's writing the screenplay. So uh, in those days, I was a monster. I was 142 kilograms. So when John saw me, he uh, thought I was the last Viking and said, can you give me a good name I can use in Conan the Barbarian? I need a strong name. And I said, uh, without hesitation, what about uh, Thorgrim? Oh, he went crazy with that name. So uh, two years later, in Denmark, I get a phone call from Spain from John Milius saying, hey, Sven, we are shooting Conan the Barbarian here in Spain. Can you come down with 10 of your big friends? <laughs> and uh, work in the movie and play the character of Thorgrim. So I would love to. So I talked to all my powerlifting friends and strongmen, made a photo session, sent all the photos down to Spain, and 
John went crazy. So when we arrived there in Spain, we were called the animals. There were 10 uh, guys from Denmark, 10 stuntmen from the United States, and 10 stuntmen from Spain. Um, and uh, I played the part of Thorgrim. So now in Spain, it was so much fun. There was a lot of time to uh, not work. For example, when we had lunch, we had the uh, uh, waiters uh, dressed with gloves, white gloves, white jackets. There was a printed menu. And lunch always lasted uh, you know, a couple of hours. They served wine. There was fruit and cheese after lunch. So it was like, wait a minute, I'm shooting a movie here in Spain, and uh, we are treated like kings, all of us. It was so much fun, so much fun. You know, it's interesting because John Milius, before he did Conan the Barbarian, he had wrote uh, the screenplay, I believe, for uh, Apocalypse Now. And I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't help but notice the similarities between the ending of uh, Apocalypse Now and the, um, the ending of Conan the Barbarian. Um, yeah. Both feature, um, one has, of course, James Earl Jones, the other has Marlon Brando. Uh, both have a guard that gets killed uh, before the, the uh, big confrontation. They both yeah. have a big crowd that ends up uh, losing their leader and has to find their own way. And I was wondering if that was the inspiration for Milius for that third act. First of all, I think John is one of the best writers, best directors in, in Hollywood. Uh, he's very outspoken. He likes guns. He, um, he speaks his mind. I remember one day uh, he called all the guys, all the animals from Denmark into his office, telling us that we should just stand behind his desk. He had to meet uh, the producer, Dina De Laurentiis, because he needed a million dollars more for the movie. And uh, we were we were just staying there, kind of a you know like a threat to uh, Dino. John had uh, two shotguns laying on his uh, uh, on his desk. And uh, after the meeting, uh, next day, uh, four guys came with a million dollar in suitcases for the picture. Did you know, just a little trivia, did you know that John Milius was the inf inspiration for the character that John Goodman played in The Big Lebowski? I know that, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah. I, I, I didn't so know I, that. I, huh? No. Yeah, I love John. He's, he's a good human being. Yeah, and he, boy, um, I don't... Uh, I did not care for the remake of Conan the Barbarian, and it lacked the I realism... Yeah, the idea was that Arnold had signed a deal with Dino Del Rentes to do five Conan pictures. And when uh, the second Conan was done, Conan the uh, Destroyer, it was directed by Richard Fleischer, who in the 50s did The Vikings with Kirk Douglas and Ernst Borgenheim. Uh, but he wanted Arnold to be more muscular, more like a bodybuilder, where John want him to be the opposite. So um, in Conan Barbarian, he looks like a real, a real, uh, you know, warrior. Where in, uh, in the second Conan, <clears throat> he looked like some kind of a fairy tale character. And uh, Arnold uh, didn't want to do more Conan pictures, so he went to Dino, and want to get out of the next three pictures. And Dino said, okay, but. Let's do Red Sonja with Brigitte Nielsen, where you play Conan again, and then after that, uh, we we don't do uh, the, the, the three, uh, three sequels to Conan. Uh, so John didn't like, uh, Arnold didn't like the, the second Conan character at all himself. It was too too pretty, yeah, too refined. I didn't know he was supposed to do five. I heard that he was supposed to do a Conan the Conqueror and a Conan the King. What was the other one? No, I can't recall that, but there was five pictures planned. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
did you did you see the remake? Because I thought the remake was horrible. No, I, I didn't. No, I mean, there's only one cone, and that's Arnold. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. But I gotta say, you know, um, as much as I like Conan, I gotta say I like Thorgrim, you know, and <laughs> I I'm seeing you with that great big massive hammer. Was that thing as heavy as it looks, or did you just make it look heavy? No, it was 25 kilogram, and I'm telling you, I had a fight scene with Arnold when I'm on a horseback, and several times when I missed to hit Arnold, the weight of the hammer pulled me off the saddle. I fell off the horse, I think, 10 times before we could do that that uh, that fight scene. And also later on, uh, I'm supposed to, when we attack the city, the little village in the beginning of the picture, uh, one of my friends, Hans Jan Jarvis, which was Arnold's stunt double, he played one of the uh, uh, people in the village, and I was supposed to hit him on top of his head with a hammer, and uh, you know, he's my friend, so I couldn't really uh, hit because I didn't want to hurt my friend. No. And John got very upset and said, Sven, now you're going to hit him. And he talked to Hans and said, is it okay if Sven hit? He said, sure. So we had one take where I hit, <laughs> hit uh, Hans so hard, so he almost fainted. Uh, it, was a, it was a tough weapon to work with. But it was, uh, there was no replica. It was the 25 kilo hammer used in the whole movie. And after the movie, John actually gave me the hammer. <laughs> wow. And yeah, and then uh, a couple of years ago, when John got sick, he had some heart problems. I brought the hammer to the hospital. I gave it back to him. So he used it now in his office as decoration. Uh, yeah, that was a heavy, that was a heavy weapon to work with. Imagine taking that to a construction site. <laughs> oh shit! I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure we can hit the nails. <laughs> yeah, well, I gotta tell you, you stood out with that uh, that hammer, and um, yeah, I remember that fight scene uh, at the beginning when you. Uh, I can probably recall the scene you're talking about where you whacked the person with the hammer because uh, there was yeah, yeah. a and few. Also, yeah, John. John had the, the makeup guy to put talcum in the helmet, so when you see the hit, I mean, uh, dust comes out from, okay. the, from the talcum. Yeah, so it had a, it had a good effect. Yeah, and I, I also love the idea that Conan had to really outsmart you in order to. Um, defeat you because I mean he was facing you and uh, and uh, Ben Davis and both and uh, both big guys and I mean he's a big yeah. guy but it's like he's a he was a he had a career in the in the American football, football, football yeah. for, for many many years and he never hurt himself he was a, a beast when he was a, a football player and he had this fantastic voice and when he arrived in Madrid I remember he had a full beard he just did a uh, a beer commercial, and he had a big beard and the voice. I mean, his voice was so impressive. He was tall, 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 much taller than me. I'm six five. He was over seven feet. He actually passed away here a couple of years ago. Yeah, I heard that. Fall, yeah, on, unfortunately, but he was a gentle giant, very nice guy. What talk about the scene where you got defeated like that? What? An, <laughs> what a nasty way to go uh, with that spike. And, uh, of course, you yeah. know, it's the only way you could take out Thorgrim when you comes right down to it. Yeah, I mean, that particular scene was the last scene of the movie, and also it was the last scene that was being shot in, in El Rima. And I remember John, uh, the day before we start shooting, he went out in the desert there. He put out loudspeakers. And then he showed up in uh, Goering's original leather coat. And he gave a speech like a German. And uh, one of Hitler's speeches, just to uh, tell them, tell all the actors and the whole crew, you know, the seriousness of this particular ending scene in the picture. Uh, and the script supervisor, who was Jewish, 
she started crying. It was so real, the speech he gave. You know, he's a... Uh, you know, he he's just... He makes people perform. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that uh, that setup whenever that your where Thorgrim gets killed off. Um, how did how did um, the process of that come about? Yeah, you know, you cut from uh, from shot to shot, so it looks real. I mean, it was a it was a fun scene to do, and the video. It was only one take, by the way. Wow. Yeah. That was a great scene, but boy, really gruesome. But I love that there where you're kind of hanging there and he kind of gets up and stands in front of you watching Thorgrim die. And um, I love that, yeah. just that little shot where you kind of tap his shield and you see yeah. um, um, a shot of uh, Thulsa Doom on the horse just coming a little closer, but not too close. And you're just slowly oh. going. I thought that was very dramatically done. I loved it. Yeah, John, he didn't really direct people. He just talked about the scene before, and he he left it up to the actors how to how to um, how to play the scene. I am not an educated actor. I was just uh, fortunate enough to be in the movie, so uh, I just did what I thought was supposed to do. And John, he loved it. So, and again, it was only one take. So. And for having no dialogue, I mean, you really, you really actually, embodied I, the character. Yeah, actually, I had some dialogue where, where you know, in the orgy chamber, you know, where I hit the big column that falls there. And, okay. And then uh, Tools of Doom shows up. And uh, my line uh, was then uh, to Tools of Doom, you know, I was really trying to kill him, you know. I was like apologizing, but they cut that out of the movie, probably okay. based on my uh, bad acting or accent. I don't know, but there was, there was some dialogue there. Well, you know what? I saw no bad acting out of you. I was t- totally drawn to your performance. And speaking of the orgy scene, you know, that was where um, Conan had to to take both of you on and you know and that's where you caused a lot of damage with that hammer where yeah, yeah. yeah. actually uh, uh, a Japanese uh, martial art uh, gentleman who was a friend of John Milius Hiro Yamasaki uh, we train every day sword fights and movements and also because I'm a martial art man uh, and champion several times in Europe, you know, because John, he want to have a different sword fight look. And there's actually a scene where he teaches Arnold uh, uh, sword fight in the movie. And one of my friends uh, are smiling in the background and Hiro Yamagati kicks him. If you remember that scene. I remember that scene, yes. Uh, But every day we practice Two hours, uh, Japanese sword fight. Yeah, that guy made the mistake of uh, laughing at. Uh, <laughs> he got kicked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I uh, remember that, was, that. That was my. He's actually a state actor, Eric Holmey. He's also a Danish champion in bodybuilding, and he's also Danish champion in martial art. Very skilled uh, uh, guy. Uh, Eric. Yeah. Um, the uh, I gotta say the production values to that movie, you know, um, like today they they go all CGI, but I, I thought Conan the Barbarian had such a fantastic art direction, and even the music. I've got the soundtrack album here on oh, CD. It's the best. Oh yeah. Great uh, Rob Cobb, the, the set designer was a genius. I mean, all the logos, you know, with the double-headed snakes and all that stuff. It was fantastic. And Rob Cobb uh, makes an appearance in the movie too. Um, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You have a scene. Yeah, uh, yeah. Selling the stu- yeah. stygian stuff is that that was him, right? 
Yeah, that's Rob Cobb, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, and the music's the music is gorgeous. Like the like I said, the soundtrack, the music, uh very it's rousing. It's, yeah, it's fantastic. I mean uh, movies in general, you know, the scoring is probably the most, the most important to create the, the atmosphere because you can't watch a movie without music. No. It it, it belongs there and that music was genius. It I was. agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I, I've got the soundtrack album and um I'm gonna tell you I, I love listening to that. I I've uh... Yeah, I actually I actually use uh, the Orgy scene uh, uh, part on my C V. Yeah. 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 I like that that the scoring was fantastic, yeah. Question the orgy scene. Did did the women have a hard time doing that? <laughs> That was all uh, Spanish extras, and uh, you know, there was, I mean, they're professionals, so there was no, there was no issues uh, whatsoever. And of course, Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course, uh, embodied uh, the role of Conan so well. Um, I wish yeah. he had done the other ones, but again, there's the first one has not been equaled. And I got I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I've seen lots of sword fights in movies, yeah. and I have never seen a sword fight, in my opinion, any better than the standoff that he and Ben Davison has after Thorgrim is killed off, where he comes well, at he, him. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. I don't. He actually six months before they start shooting, he practiced with Yamasaki. Two hours every day for six months. So when he uh, uses the sword, it looks natural. It looks like he's born with a sword in his hands. Arnold is very particular when it comes to, you know, uh, you know, physical stuff. In Terminator, the first Terminator movie where he hangs out a truck and he uses a cut-off shotgun as a six-shooter, he practices that for three months every day hours so um he, he had great discipline and he's very good at prepping and also the character he played conan i mean uh, he gave a speech to crumb there i mean that's i think the actor arnold the actor was best when he did conan he he acted that part fantastic i agree yeah. I gotta and, uh, say, yeah. He, he more he's more or less himself. Yeah. Uh which is important because big actors like John Wayne, he was always himself. Steve McQueen McQueen was always himself. Very often people think that actors have to play different parts, but most actors, most icons, they're just themselves. And I gotta so say it, oh, I it see. becomes real, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, when he and Ben Davison have the standoff, like yeah, yeah. I love the sound of the swords when they are hitting together. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, there's like this great shot where it's on Ben Davison where he's, uh, I think there's like three swings with the sword, and then it cuts to Schwarzenegger, who's now very, very confident. And then he's coming back, and then finally he cuts him with the sword, and all you see is Ben just... All he can do is try to die with dignity, you know. And yeah, uh, yeah. but I love the sound of the swords clashing, and I've never heard it sound that good in any other movie. Well, also where, where he falls there and dies in the end, yeah, they used a lot of fake blood to uh, make it splash, you know, and spread out. I mean, there was several several hundred liters blood they used to get that effect. Talk about sound with the swords, the scene where Arnold cuts off Tulsa Doom's head on the, uh, uh, you know, on the steps of, the, of Doom's, of, of, you know, the castle. Yep. That sound effect is taken from a Japanese sound lab library where they have uh, record, recorded 
the effect of a Japanese swordsman chopping off a head of a person. So that is a it's a real sound from a real killing. And John was very particular with that. And also under to the Doom's shoulders was two big sticks, you know, big like a LP record, two mm-hmm. uh, two inches thick. So when Allah chopped the head, he chops into the meat at the same time. So uh, that scene, and also the head being now thrown by Arnold, by Conan down the steps, that's also original sound of a human head from this Japanese library that has been thrown down some steps. So those two sound effects are real sound effects. No uh, hanky-panky. Wow. Did you? I, I'm a snake lover. I love snakes. Now, um, you guys all had to work with snakes in that film. What was that experience like with you? It's fine with me because in those days I was married to a, a lady who uh, danced with snakes and performed with snakes, pythons. Ah. So I had no problem with, with snakes. It's just a, a beautiful, uh, a, a beautiful animal, I think. And in no the problem. in the film, you rose a, a giant snake. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty big. That's actually well done. I think that was a big. I think that was very expensive. That snake that had built there, they were very real. I think. Very, very convincing. Yeah. yeah but uh, Conan has to encounter that and fight that off. Yeah. Yeah. What was it like working with uh, James Earl Jones as Thelsa Doom? No, he's just a gentleman. I remember uh, I was told that uh, his voice, you know, was he's still being used on CNN, where 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 they introduce CNN on TV. They say this is CNN. That's uh, that's James Earl Jones' voice. Yeah, he's a state actor and very professional. And uh, it was an honor to work with him. And a uh, nice guy, no uh, no uh, acting out like he's a special person. Just a nice person. I think it's sad, too, that... Um, I think one of the most beautiful women i ever seen was Valerie Quinesson, who played, of course, the princess that, that they had to rescue. And sadly, she went too soon. And... Um, I thought well, she was, had, yeah, she was gorgeous. Yeah, yeah John had an, we had an issue with her because she was uh, unfortunately uh, using drugs a lot. So when you see her acting out, uh, she's on a heavy influence of drugs. There was a lot of issues. She came late for work, and and uh, there, there was a lot of problems with, with her friends. Actress, right? Yeah. 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 She uh, went too soon. Um, I'm going to tell you. Um, did Did you know? Um, you probably did that. There was two different endings to Conan the Barbarian. One that featured Valerie at the end, and one that did not. I was not aware of that. Yeah. When I grew up with the film, I just uh, I just saw. Conan would show up there at the end, kill the guard, confront uh, Thalsa Doom, and kill him, and burn the place. Well, the version that's out on Blu-ray right now has him showing up with Valerie Quinesson. Oh, really? Yeah. And um, they kill the guard, and it shows her with him. Like, she walks in front of him before uh-huh. he kills the guard. And then uh, he... Yeah, and then he confronts Thalsa Doom, and then afterwards, like when he's, the place is burning down, um, she's bowing down in front of him, and, oh, really? okay. and yeah. he he takes her hand, and he leads her away from the place, and the last shot of the movie is him carrying her off into the distance to take her home to King Osric. Yeah, I remember we shot that scene, <clears throat> but I'm not aware of it's out with that ending. I'm not aware of that. I haven't seen the movie for many years, so 
Yeah, it was interesting to see that um, because yeah, uh, yeah. the two different endings. And um, like I said, uh, I, I, I'll take more of <laughs> Valerie any, any day. Like uh, There were some nice close-up shots of her with those snakes on her forearms, you know, where she crosses her yeah. arms and... <clears throat> And some nice up close shots of her. Like I said, I thought she was a beautiful woman, and sad to see that she's gone. Absolutely. Yeah. And speaking of beautiful women, of course, we can't forget Sandal Bergman, who um, her dancing skill really came into play in her movements in that movie. I thought she was impressive. You know, she was a part of the uh, <clears throat> daily training we had with Yamasaki, <clears throat> and. Uh, she looks like she's born with a sword in her hands. Yeah, I understand she got her finger cut part the way through the movie, and you can see kind of a thing slide down the shaft of the sword to protect her hand. And yeah, one that, little shot. Yeah, that happens to all of us. Yeah. yeah. What, what was she like to work with? Professional and sweet. Actually, I had the pleasure of... Uh, I did a... I did a, something called a Hollywood show where fans are showing up, signing autographs and buying pictures and so, sitting with her, representing uh, the whole Conan thing. And she's this little top shape and still beautiful. Yeah. Still working. Yeah. Oh, she was fun to watch just move in those fight scenes. Like, you could tell... Yeah. Like the dancing just came hand in hand for her. It, and she yeah, made she it work. Was, she looks gracious, yeah. Yeah, very, very yeah. smooth. Mm hmm. Yeah, and that scene there where she makes the appearance at the end, like uh, with all the lights and all the silver and the gleam, you know, that looked really good on her. You want to live forever? You want to live forever. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, and of course, uh, yeah. Jerry Lopez playing Sumatike, you know, of course, he was a surfer, a professional surfer, and even that skill even come into play in his movements. Absolutely, and he's a good friend of John, and uh, because John is a big surfer himself, very skilled surfer, and that's actually the only movie Jerry Lopez did. He haven't done anything since, but he is one of John's personal friends. Yeah, I think, I think he had him in Big Wednesday, if I remember correctly. Oh, yeah, Big Wednesday also, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. but, yeah. but um, yeah, like, I, I like the idea that, like, um, Sandal was a dancer and he was a surfer, and I liked how those skills came into play and how they exactly. performed. That was beautiful. Exactly. Yeah. And, of course, I know you weren't in the scene with... Max von Sido, but uh, playing uh, King Osric, I mean, what a uh, 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 towering individual to, to play that part. Yeah, yeah he uh, he worked for one week, and then he invited the director and all the cast, Mega Van Hair, into his trailer, and uh, he uh, served champagne and caviar for all of us and thanked us for being a part of this movie and a true gentleman, very classy guy. Yeah. Yeah. Y yep. And still, still with us and still working. Like very impressive career. Oh yeah, he's he's the man. Worked with that uh, Ing uh, Ingmar Bergman. And of course, it was in The Exorcist. He doesn't seem like he's, he's like he looked old in The Exorcist, but <laughs> he's still going. Like he must be in very good shape. He he was in The Force yeah. Awakens there a couple years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. A big big time actor. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that helped the movie also because Arnold was a non actor, Thorke was a non actor, uh, Jerry Lowe was a non actor, Sandra Bergman had acted a little bit. Uh, Jerry Lopez, Ben Davison. So I think uh, John preferred to have that combination of non-actors and then very high-skilled actors to, you know, uh, uh, as you said, um, James Earl Jones and yeah. Maxwell Suto, and et cetera. You know, in the opening of the film, too, you worked with... Uh, uh, William Smith, 
who of course played um, uh, Conan's father. Yeah, I remember when I met him, that voice of his, mm -hmm. a fantastic voice, and I remember him from a TV show called Falconetti, where he was the first guy that showed muscles in movies. You know, he had these enormous triceps. So meeting him was a great honor, and I was impressed by his voice. He had a fantastic voice. And years later, I worked out with him in World Gym in California several times, and every time he saw me, he said, Who oh, is Fred? Your guy with a big hammer. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, he said, Sure, sure. And I, I, I've forgotten the name of the woman that played to Conan's mom. Um, I had yeah, it that was, a, that was a Spanish actress. She only spoke Spanish, so. And there was only, I think, two days of work, so we, we really didn't get acquaintance by any means with her. Beautiful woman. And I gotta say, that scene where James Earl Jones cuts her head off. I mean, and oh you just God. when the when the body falls, and you just see young Conan, and and just as the, her hand is leaving his, and I think it was I think it was Roger Ebert in his review had, had compared it to Dumbo, where Dumbo's uh, sees his mom and the shackles, and he said that um, it's interesting in a superhero movie or a comic book movie where you can get that kind of emotion like that. And John Millius yeah, was, pulled that off so well. It was very poetic. Yeah. and uh, very poetic. And, of course, when he, he looks back at you guys, like, he knows there's going to be a future encounter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a beautiful scene. A beautiful scene. Yeah. And, of course, so many interesting sets in that movie. The Wheel, the wheel of Pain. Uh huh. <laughs> yep. And um, of course, all that armor you guys wore was was that heavy heavy to wear the armor? Sure. You could handle that. I would never be able to handle that. <laughs> no, no, it, no. It was uh, it was heavy. So out out of out of that movie, was there um, what, what was the hardest thing for you to do? finish the movie I mean I, I, I didn't want to finish it because it was like playing uh, cowboys and Indians every day having great food having fun we had 17 different locations in Spain explore Segovia all the beautiful places in Spain the hardest part was to finish the movie I didn't want to go home I had such a great time oh yeah it looked like fun one person we didn't touch on I just thought of him uh, Mako <laughs> he was a funny addition to the movie. No, he uh, he's actually a very skilled acting teacher, acting coach. I had an acting coach. He he also died here recently, but yeah, he was uh, he was very he was well known for those particular uh, character roles, <clears throat> and had this acting school that was very highly respected. You know, I was going to say, I loved it when uh, he first encountered, where Conan first encounters him, and he tries uh -huh. to come off as threatening, and then Conan kind of laughs at him, and then they, he laughs, and they get acquainted. I, I thought that was just a beautiful moment in the film. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and of Actually, that scene where Arnold takes off on the camel was very complicated because the camel didn't want to move. <laughs> I well, think we worked on that for two days. The fucking camel wouldn't move at all. He punches out a camel in both movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's a, it's a strange animal. Not particularly friendly. No, um, I'm trying to think. Were those the one hump or the two hump camels? Oh, well, that's a good question. <laughs> I can't remember. I know one's an Asian camel and one's an African camel. The one hump is the African camel, but... I don't I know. The one, the one, the one hump. hump, I think, yeah. 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 Yeah, he had some complications with camels, all right. I, I understand he had he had a few accidents on the film, Arnold did, falling off a off a horse and I guess he was bitten by a snake and <laughs> No, it was a it was a physical movie, very physical. Yeah. And uh Arnold John won Arnold to do all of 
all of the stuff himself. He very seldom used uh, his stunt doubles. He had three stunt doubles, a Spanish stunt double and two Danish stunt doubles. But he seldom used them because John didn't want Arnold to use them. He wanted to see Arnold do this stuff himself. And Arnold, of course, he did that. He's a physical guy, so. And, of course, um, again, you weren't at this part of the movie, but must mention the wolf witch, <laughs> Cassandra. Yeah, that was a great part. She's a, she's a hustler that works a lot in town, and I think that part was her best job ever. That was a fantastic job, the wolf witch. That, that was one hell, hell of a sex scene, huh? <laughs> Yeah, and there's actually a funny story from that scene because it became a close set because both actors are naked. Yeah. And uh, so they're breaking for lunch. And then uh, when they come back for lunch, the script supervisor stands up and says, hey, hey, wait a minute. And she uses her pencil and moves out her penis from one leg to the other leg because that was according to the scene we had done before lunch that Arnold's penis was laying on the right side and uh, when we continued shooting the penis was lying on the left side since she went over with a pencil and moved the pen moved the penis and said it had to be here and of course everybody cracked up because she paid attention to detail wow <laughs> that that detail yeah 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 and you don't get that a lot but she obviously knows how to keep the continuity going are you kidding me? That's a job. Yeah. She's a pro. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. And, of, of course, you, you, you worked with Arnold through so many movies. Of course, you had a, a, a sore fight with him again in Conan the Destroyer. Um, mm -hmm. that's, act that's actually one of the most uh, watched sword fights of all sword fights. What was we it? Start on horse we start on horseback and yeah. no stunt doubles. And uh, we chopped each other's fingers so many times because even though when you fight, you know, you can't just pretend. We actually did it for real in a sense. And sometimes uh, the finger was in the way. So well, we have a lot of a lot of small accidents in that fight. What was it like returning to Conan? Was it uh... working with Richard Fleischer was different. He was a very he was an older man. And he was not particular a friend like uh, John was. He like kept for himself and was very uh, by the book kind of director. But John was more relaxed. I remember seeing in uh, Rima where the second unit director comes in and say, "Hey, Mr. Medius, we're ready to shoot the scene." And John is now sitting playing with his uh, model airplanes he put together and stuff. And he says, just shoot the fucking scene. <laughs> yeah, but don't you have to be there? No, you know what to do. Shoot the scene. Can you see I'm busy? <laughs> so, so that, was, that was a funny situation. Now, you mentioned Red Sonja earlier. D did he actually play Conan in Red Sonja? I thought he had a different name. Yeah, but that was a Conan character. I can't recall the name of the character, but that was supposed to be a Conan character. Yeah. You out of uh, besides Conan the Barbarian, like um, like you were to Schwarzenegger so many times. Is there any other of the movies that really stand out to you that you really enjoyed working on? First of all, I love to work with Arnold. He's the kind of a guy that if the script supervisor or some electrician or makeup person had a birthday, he also rings birthday cakes and champagne. And uh, keeps a speech, you know, he's uh, he's everybody's buddy. So he's so much fun to work with, very relaxed, very professional, very disciplined. It's just a pleasure. You don't feel you work, you you think you, you feel you're playing, having fun. So he always creates, compared to other actors, he creates a great atmosphere on the set, um, a friendly to everybody, talks the same way to everybody. He's just a cool cat. You worked on uh, Running Man with him as well, and I saw uh, 
a scene, yeah. Uh, yeah, before I got on the interview, I was looking at some uh, scenes in some of the movies that you was in, and you, of course, got to work with Jesse the Body Ventura. Uh, Absolutely. What was he like? You know, he also had a great voice, I think. I like voices, but his voice is fantastic. He's a, he's a little peculiar, because I did another picture with him called Abraxas. Okay. It was shot in, Ca- in Canada, in Toronto, actually, and uh, directed by Damien V. And there's a scene where he's chasing me, uh, and he r- has to run through some water uh, with his uh, boots on, and then uh, we have to do the scene again. And he now wants to change his boots because his socks are wet. And the writer say, yeah, yeah, but they're going to get wet again. Yeah, but he insisted on you know, having uh, dry socks on before he shot this. So he's a little peculiar, but a nice guy, though. It's interesting because he came up, of course, in the ranks of wrestling, and, of course, Sendel Bergman had worked with Rowdy Roddy Piper in Hell Comes to Frogtown. Uh-huh. So um, I know you're a big man. How how does uh, a guy like Jesse Ventura um, fare standing next to you in terms of size? Yeah, I mean, I don't. I'm hundred. I was then in those days, hundred forty-two kilograms. He's about hundred ten kilo or something. Yeah, I'm quite. I'm quite bigger. Yeah, but uh, people used to people used to call me quote unquote. Sven is the biggest actor in town, <laughs> based on my size. Well, I can see that. <laughs> And uh, you worked with, um, I was going to say, have you have ever, um, besides Jesse, worked with any of the wrestlers? Yeah, I did 160 pictures and TV shows, so I worked with a few of them. But there's a lot of movies I forgot I did, so when I get residual sometimes, I said, what, I did that movie too. <laughs> I did uh, 30 years in Hollywood, I did 160 pictures. Yeah, and uh, you did a lot of stunt work. A lot of stunt work. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, of course, you worked uh, opposite Russell Crowe in Gladiator. Oh, my God, yeah. I won two stunt awards for that, two uh, stunt Oscars for that fight scene. Best fight and best work with animals. That yeah. was an experience. That had a tiger. Was it, that, <laughs> wow, that that is quite an animal, a tiger. Yeah, we had six tigers, three French tigers, and three American tigers. I mean, uh, handled by Americans and handled by Frenchmen. And uh, the French tigers was kind of treated badly, where the American tigers was treated with love. And there was a lot of competition between the tiger teams. So when it was close up, it was the American tigers, which was supposed to be more friendly. Even though to make the tigers act, they had a horse, a guy on a horseback with a blindfolded horse to, uh, you know, eager the tiger to react. And there was uh, two guys on the set with uh, guns, with tranquilizers. And according to what they told us, is if they shoot the tiger with tranquilizer, it takes a minute before the drugs uh, the, dr- the drugs works. So fuck a minute. I mean, the tiger gonna fucking kill you. So it's not the an animal you're petting. No, it's a beautiful animal, but you know, it's not a pussy cat. No, it's a tiger. It's a tiger. Yeah, they're they're a big animal. I've I've seen uh, footage of them like killing crocodile. You know, there's they're nothing to play. They're nothing to play with. Yeah, the only more powerful predator is the polar bear, but the tiger is pretty tough. Yep, yep. Wow. Anyhow, anyhow, um, I want to tell you a little fun story from Conan the Barbarian. Oh, sure. Because, you know, I'm from Denmark, and the Danish uh, humor is like English humor. It's very, very extraordinary. So um, 
when we worked in Madrid, prepping for the movie, uh, Anna wants to go to this particular Italian restaurant every weekend because there was a waitress there he kind of was looking at and uh, was charmed by and the food sucks so after going there three four weekends i said to her you know i'm tired of going here let's uh let's make a a joke with arnold so we went out and bought some pink letterhead a lipstick and we wrote arnold a letter <laughs> so dear, dear mr arnold First of all, let me point out, I don't like your, the two goons you're hanging with, Eric and Sven. But you seem to be such a sincere person, and I'd love to meet you, and we can sit down, you and, me, you and me, and have a talk. So please, next time you come to the restaurant, let me know if we can have a rendezvous. <laughs> and uh, we had a, I bought a lipstick also, so I kissed the letter and put it under his door, the little perfume on it also, under his door. <laughs> so, a week passed by, and said, hey, uh, guys, let's go to that Italian restaurant. I said, oh, no, not again. But she was not there that night, and he was like sitting there, looking after her, and but he didn't mention the letter at all. Next weekend, the same thing, same stupid restaurant, she was not there. And then he got a little tipsy, and he said, guys, you know, can we talk? I said, sure. And I said, can we talk about the letter you got? Saying, dear Mr. Arnold, let me point out, I don't like the two goons you're hanging with, I want to meet you, and since you're sincere, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I said, yeah, how, how the fuck do you know that letter? I said, you stupid <laughs> fuck, I wrote the letter. <laughs> ah, Sven, I'm gonna get back. I'm gonna get you back. But he never did. I put a lot of practical jokes on Arnold. And also, when we shot uh, the ending scene in a, in a, a Rima, we stayed at a golf hotel with very few people on it. There were some Japanese people that got all early off in the morning to play golf, but it was kind of an empty, empty hotel. And I'll say, you know, guys, meaning the 10 animals from Denmark sitting with him in his uh, in his uh, enormous in three floors uh, room with three levels there's a guy from Penthouse Magazine a journalist coming down to interview me he's going to stay for a week he want to hang with us so please make him uh, a part of the team but behave please I say okay so he came down, he hanged with us, and he felt he was one of the bodies. So now, uh, the day before he leaves, I say to Arla, listen, we have been behaving for a week now. Can we have a little fun with him? Maybe we should get him drunk and, and do some stuff to him. And then Arla said, go ahead. So we, we, he invited, we invited him to Arla's room, all the boys, all the animals, and we start drinking tequila. And uh, Arnold is not a heavy drinker. So after 10 shots, he excused himself to go to bed. He was drunk. But the guy from Penthouse, he was supposed to have fun with, he was not drunk at all. So I take Arnold to bed, uh, you know, I put a bucket beside his bed if he want to throw up. I loosened his pants, took his shoes off, and opened his shirt. Be sure he was comfortable. There was water by the bed, and there was a bucket he could puke in if he got sick. And I left the door half open and went down to the boys. So now the guy from Penthouse Magazine says, I mean, now Arnold is strong. Should we make some fun with him? <laughs> and I looked at him and said, shit, you're actually the cool cat. What should we do? What about carrying him down in the lobby? Put him on the couch down there. It's a good idea. But we couldn't really manage it because you're all a little tipsy. We keep dropping him on the floor. Managed to bring him down the lobby. And then some guy said, what about bringing his bed down to the lobby? This is 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Say, cool. So now the bed went down there. 
the uh, small uh, bed tables went down there, the lamp, the couch. We entered the whole room and made a kind of a happening scene in the middle of the lobby with the carpet there, with the bed, with the, with the lamps and stuff. <laughs> and we went hiding. So now it's about 6 o'clock in the morning. Now the Japanese uh, golf players start going out to play that funny game with a little ball, try to hit that little ball. <laughs> and they are seeing the scene there, so they think it's a happening. They don't know who's in the pit, but they're like, oh, Jota, oh, Soneska. Oh, Moja, oh, Soneska. Like, you know, Spanish happening, art, right? <laughs> yeah. So now they're noisy. So I don't kind of kind of wakes up and take off the blanket and farts a little bit and sits up and he looks around realizing he's in the lobby and he screams so loud so you think I'll probably hear it in Madrid Sven! <laughs> yeah so we had a lot of fun there every day there was stuff like that there was, there was another day we had this uh, habit, Arnold. We had a driver yeah. who spoke Ger- who spoke German, and he played that Jordan music, Austrian music. Every morning we went to work. Me, Eric, and Arnold in his private uh, with the private driver. And we were so irritated, you know, that fucking music, humpy, humpy, humpy music. And Arnold had this. Uh, he took a lot of pictures with his camera, and then he gave the driver the film. And then Ryo went to have the film developed on the back the next day or two days later. Then Arnold was sitting there looking at every picture, you know, very, very, very particular about it. So one day, you know, Arnold's camera was laying there in his trailer. So I said to Eric, Eric, come here. I took Arnold's camera and said, take your pants down, Eric. (laughs) And I took pictures of Eric's balls and ass and stuff. (laughs) 36 pictures and put the camera back. <laughs> so now, three, four days later, Arnold says to the driver, Why, where, is, where is my film? Why? Ah, uh, multiple problems, uh, policia, uh, police, uh, big problem. So I said, What? So now the driver gives Arnold the pictures, and unfortunately, in one of the pictures, there is a belt buckle is seen so Arnold realizes that, that we took the pictures. <laughs> yeah. so, anyhow, it's just the tip of the iceberg. A lot of jokes, a lot of fun. Um, that's why Arnold kind of uh, took a liking to me because, you know, I don't treat Arnold like a star. He's just a friend. And uh, you have fun with your friends, right? Yeah. You could probably yeah. write a whole book on the pranks you play I, on him. <laughs> I did. Oh, you did? Yeah, it's called Strong Man in Hollywood. Okay. I didn't know about this. When did you do this? No, it's, it, yeah, I wrote it in Danish. It came out here a couple of years ago in Denmark. And one of the top critics gave me five stars for the book. Is there go? And now, go and be now me, and my, me and my wife is actually moved to Spain, we have uh, several books we are working on, and uh, the Strongman Hollywood going to be in English coming out here hopefully the next three months or so. Oh, yeah. Where I tell all the fucking stories. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, those are some pretty funny jokes. Um, one thing also I noticed last night when I was looking up Conan, I did not notice that the guy that the beginning of the movie that had the paint all over his body... You know, when the, the the village invasion is about to happen? He was another bodybuilder, too, was he not? No, Franco Colombo. That's Arnold's friend, yeah. Oh, okay. That's Franco Colombo. One See, of the strongest men in the world. Or he's also a powerlifter. See, I Small didn't guy. even know who he was. I But I always remembered him showing up there, you know? No, that's Franco Colombo. Okay. One of the strongest men in the world. He's from Sardinia. And actually, Arnold exercised with him in Munich. And when Arnold moved to the United States, he had Joe Weider, who sponsored Arnold, to bring Franco also. And he was a 
a sheep herd in Sardinia, and a bodybuilder and taxi driver in Munich. Wow. So that's Frank, Franco Colombo. Mr. Olympia also in 1981. Okay, I did not know that. I was reading up some stuff last night, and I was like, oh, I found that char- yeah. character peculiar. Yeah, yeah. Franco Colombo. Okay. Yeah. And, of course, you mentioned there at the beginning, you won some uh, powerlifting awards of your own. Like, uh, do you want to talk about st- that? Strongest man in the world. I can in, believe in, that. In, in 1985... When I decided to move to California, I had announced in the, the Danish press that I would do the world record and bench press for Masters, which is 40 years old, and I did 530 pounds. Yeah, what bench th- press? That that that's an amazing accomplishment, and uh... I was 40. I was 40 years old, so my Hollywood career started when I was 40 years old. And uh, after 30 years, I moved to Spain here a year ago. I spent 30 years in Hollywood. And Spain, Spain, of course, is home. That's my home now, yeah. Well, you know what? I've never made it out that far. Um, you're, t- you're talking come, come, to s- you're, you're talking. Yeah, you're talking to somebody who never travels. Uh, oh God. Yeah, I, I am so bad with that too. Um, travel and uh, there's more to the world than Canada. That's for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, I get that. But um, you know, you you've had um, just an amazing. Not even with Arnold Schwarzenegger, but even with your other films and whatnot, you know, you've... I worked with, I worked with Sean Connery, I worked with Michael Caine, worked yeah. with Steven Seagal, uh, Chuck Norris, uh, Mel Gibson, I worked with all the stars, all the big directors. Yeah, you were in the Lethal Weapon movies as well. Yeah, I did two of them. Yeah, with I worked me. with David Hasselhoff. The way I get work is different than the normal actor. One day in California I'm driving my Jeep and I see a sign there filming Baywatch on the beach. So I put my Jeep in four-wheel drive. I go down by the sand stop and one meter before David Hasselhoff jump out with my Jeep and walk up to David and say, hey David, my name is Sven. I have a question for you. He said, what is that? I said, why did I never work for you in Baywatch? And I did Three Baywatch episodes, episodes and four Baywatch night with David Hasselhoff. And you worked with Jean Claude Van Damme as well. I worked with, in Hot Target and Nowhere to Run. I, I actually, worked with everybody. I actually interviewed somebody from Hard Target. I interviewed uh, Harrison Page on here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I we were talking about Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, and we we yeah, talked yeah. about uh, uh, he yeah. was in Hard Target. You never get to work with Jackie Chan? No, I never did, no. <laughs> Imagine him him having to fight Thorgrim. Yeah, you know, I can still kick ass, so don't worry about it. <laughs> well, you know what? That This has been such an honor to have you come on here and um, celebrate the uh, 35th anniversary of Conan the Barbarian. How does that feel, 35 years of Conan? That's surreal. But I used to say, uh, yesterday a young boy, today a man, tomorrow a corpse in a coffin in a graveside forgotten. When you um, go to these conventions, is there anything uh, anything that stands out that you ever get asked to sign? Yeah, there really is, because me and my wife, Pekita, who's <laughs> Swedish, we went to this Hollywood show uh, you know, it's kind of a, for the Conan picture. But everybody talked about more rats, a movie I did called More Rats. Oh, yeah. By, uh, Kevin yeah, Smith. And Kevin Smith, yeah. And uh, I mean, I, have, I think I signed over 100 pictures with More Rats while I'm playing a security guard. That surprised me. Of you course, know- they were interested in Conan and all your other pictures. 
but more rats. I mean, people are traveling from Canada to come to uh, Los Angeles to have me sign a poster or sign a, uh, you know, a, a photograph or something for more rats. But that really surprised me. You know what? I I was looking at your credits last night, and I had just until you brought it up, I had forgotten that you had done mall rats. What was it like working for Kevin Smith? Fantastic. Oh, he's got great personality, very engaging. Yeah, he smokes dope. He's funny. <laughs> yeah, very very funny. He's, he's funny. Well, I guess they're they're doing a mall rats too, because I noticed in your credits you're supposed to be in that. Are you not? Yeah, they're, they're approaching me, but how far they are with I don't know. They, they go give you a, a bigger part. You go, you go take them out this time. <laughs> no, I'm gonna play the same character. Yeah, I noticed. The, for, yeah, the force. I think I was called the force. Well, that the, picture. Well, that's that's quite an interesting um, uh, picture compared shot, to uh, Conan the Barbarian. That was shot in. Uh, Minnesota in the big mall. Yeah. The American mall, yeah. And it was cold there. Jesus Christ. Cold here, too. So, yeah, but Minnesota is colder. So when when Kevin Smith cast you, did um, did he uh, cast you because of, of Conan, of, of uh, inspiration from that? or No, no. I... Uh, um, I have worked with a producer called Jim Jackson. Okay. He did Hard Hard Target. Okay. And um, we worked in Louisiana, in New Orleans. So we hanged at night, and he talked about more rats. I, I should be in more rats. <laughs> so now I did they're shooting the movie. So I called up Jim Jackson and said, "What about me working in more rats? What's happening?" Ah, he said, "Come to uh, come to Minnesota. We fix it." So now my friend, he was the stunt coordinator. He was supposed to play that character. So they gave me the part. So I was not casted. It was just based on the producers uh, keeping his promise that I was supposed to work in more rights. But without me uh, giving that phone call, I would never work more right. So, well, I I know you so well from Conan the Barbarian. It's, it's so funny that that you're in mall rats, and it's even funnier that you have so many people at the conventions approach you with mall rat stuff. Like for yeah, me, it would be Conan. Me and my wife were so surprised. Even Sandra Bergman said, "Jesus, we're here for Conan, and I don't want to have mall rats. We want to have mall rats shots." What can I say? Wow. For me, it's just work. I mean, I'm just an average guy. I'm not an actor. I'm just lucky and fortunate. I'm very good at falling off a horse and say, ouch. I have a couple lines. Actually, my biggest job ever was shot in Toronto. I did Captain Power and his uh, Soldiers of the Future. I did 23 episodes. In I stayed uh, two and a half years in Toronto working on that TV show. Captain Power and his Soldiers of the Future. Okay. And there I worked as an actor. I learned to become an actor because every week there was a new, there was a new script and new new dialogue. I worked with I think twelve different directors on that show. Two and a half years in Toronto. Wow. What? So I'm just happy. I'm just happy to work. And uh, it's not really work. It's just fun. It's fun. Well, you know, um, I think it was Leslie Nielsen, uh, the comedian uh, from the Naked Gun movies, had said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He said that uh, if you're not having fun at something, it's time to move on. So here, here we go. Yeah. So if you're having fun, I, I say keep at it. Yeah, because uh, sometimes you work must maybe 16 hours a day. You work, in, uh, for example, when we did. Uh, Red, when we did Red Heat, you know, I had a big fight scene in the snow, freezing, but it's fun, you know. Many hours, but it's still fun. That the... That's that's the best with the business, you know. You work with great people, 
all very skilled, were very talented, but they like to have fun. A lot of practical jokes, a lot of time, to, you know, to uh, <laughs> mingle with each other because maybe you wait six, seven hours, then you shoot for five minutes. So you have to be <clears throat> a likable person and you have to like the people you work with, not based on your talent or your skills. If you're easy to work with and you're fun to work with and you can crack a joke, you get another job. Was but that... If you uh... act like a, act like a, you know, it's, you know, like some big actors that think they're God's gift to acting, they don't work much because nobody likes to work with them. They like to have fun because it's tough work. You have to perform. Sometimes, uh, you know, you have to perform five o'clock in the morning. You're waiting for 10, 10, 12 hours. You sleep in your trailer or your camper or whatever. And then they'll wake you up five minutes before you. And then you have to be on. So you need discipline and patience. That scene and uh, getting along with people. That, that that scene in the snow with you and Arnold, but <laughs> how freezing cold was that? You know, normally I have balls, but in this movie I have no balls. They was, <laughs> was swinging. Yeah, I, I cold. Actually, the stunt the stunt coordinator Benny Dobbins, he got a heart attack. Oh. And he died. He died. He died uh, in that scene. And we stopped shooting for two days. He died because it was cold. Oh. That shot in uh, the in, the indoor fight where the fight starts is in Hungary, and the outdoor scene in the snow is in Slatming, Austria. Wow! And it was cold. It was cold. Yeah. Well, where where can people go to? Uh to uh, get an autograph. I, I would love to get an autograph picture if I could. What what are you going to use it for? For what? Oh, just for myself. I keep all my autographs. Oh, you do? Yes, and I then, do. Uh, then uh, you have any photos of me or something? Um, I, well, I could uh, probably send you something, but I, I wouldn't, yeah, I would, I wouldn't get you to give your address out here over the, <laughs> over the, over the air here. But then uh, let's hook up on, on let's communicate and uh, send it here, and I can return it, and I'd love to sign it. Yeah, I, now I, I would send something from Conan. I, I don't, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not Understand. something from Mallrats. <laughs> I thought, I thought right. that was funny, though. I can say. Yeah. You, you... I actually, Conan the Barbarian, I said to myself, wait a minute, if, if, this is a, if this is a job to shoot Conan the Barbarian, I would love to do this kind of work. Well, and I was, have been able to do it for 30 years, but that was based on Conan. I fell in love with the filmmaking. Also because, you know, you're a family of 250 people. You're like a circus moving from town to town, all very skilled people, very hard working. And then uh, you split up, and then there's another job, a new family. Is that you become some kind of a gypsy? You're traveling all the time. You work with great people. You have fun. You go sightseeing. You explore the area you're in, and it's it's a fantastic uh, life to have. Very, I'm very fortunate. Not yeah. based on my skills, but I was a big guy. I had some skills as a powerlifter and as a martial art guy, but not an educated actor. It's just God's gift. Very fortunate. Well, you know what? It's been an honor today having you come on this show, and um, and um, like I said, I've. I've remembered you all these years with that big hammer. So I actually, yeah, I, I probably remember you more than Arnold in that movie. Yeah, it's funny because a lot of people are talking about that particular character. Um, and then when I look back at it 35 years ago, it's amazing. You know, also, you know, movies are going to be seen by your kids, your grandkids, their kids, and their kids. It's kind of a, a surreal thing, 
and uh, it's not really dawning on me the big impression it makes on people because when people ask for my autograph I used to say what what are you going to use it for I'm going to hang on the wall or I don't understand that because I never ask people for an autograph you know I'm not starstruck or something but I think people need maybe uh, heroes or whatever but you know I'm from Denmark if the queen of Denmark goes shopping I don't care. But in Hollywood and all the other places, if you see people that are seen in movies, they go bananas. So it's a little uh, surreal to be a part of that. And it uh, haven't really uh, dawned on me yet the importance of it. I, I think it's a little, uh, it's a little funny uh, that people kind of like me because I had a big hammer in the movie or did this and that. It's a, it's a little abstract. It's not... It's surreal for me. Well, where I'm located here in uh, New Brunswick, Canada, we don't have we don't have very many celebrities here, so... so we understand. Yep, yeah, so... I, I'm not really part of that, but I'm going to tell you, it, it has been great to, to have you on here. And I was just wondering, before we close off, if I could get you to do a plug for my show. What would that plug be, boss? Just, just uh, state your name and um, say you're listening to... My name's Greg Gilbert, and uh, my show's called Python's Paradise, Python Like the Snake. Uh-huh. And um, I'm located in... New Brunswick, Canada. Oh my God, that's a lot to remember. <laughs> so, <laughs> you you are, let me, huh? Let me write it down. Hang on a second. Sure, yeah. sure. <laughs> my dogs are barking. Can you hear my dogs? Yeah, I read on Wikipedia that you're a dog lover. I'm a big dog lover. I have a Chihuahua. Yeah. And I have a Jack Russell. I used to have a, a Staffordshire Terrier, German Shepherd, Belgian Shepherd. I love dogs. My parents Memphis. my parents have an Australian Shepherd, very friendly dog. Oh, yeah? Yeah. No, I like dogs. And the more you learn about human beings, the more you like animals. Yeah, absolutely. Right? They are... They love you, whatever you do, they just love you. Where people very often are judging you and... Animals do not, yeah. They don't, they don't, they just... It's love and that's it. Yeah. Hang on a second here. Sure. It's fine to hide the pencil. Great, Gilbert. Yeah. The show's called Python's Paradise. Python's Paradise. Yeah. I'm still waiting. On the hunt. <laughs> and where are you located? I am located in um, Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. You can just say New Brunswick, Canada, and that would be just as good, you know? New Brunswick. Yeah. It, you gotta say Canada because I guess there's a New Brunswick in the states as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, so um, Python's Paradise with Greg Gilbert in yeah. New Brunswick, Canada. Yeah, and just okay. you know, state your name um, mm-hmm. beforehand. Yeah. Okay. You okay. ready? Yeah. Okay, roll. Okay, this is Sven Ole Thorsen. Uh, also called Thorgrim from Conan Barbarian, and Python's Paradise with Greg Gilbert, out of New Brunswick, Canada. Thank you so much, uh, Sven. Uh, it was an honor talking to you, and thanks for joining me and celebrating the 35th anniversary of Conan the Barbarian. Is that something? God bless you, and uh, I talk to you soon. Absolutely. You take care. Hasta la vista. (laughs) Take care. Take care. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye.
Bye-bye.